<clears throat> All right, you guys, we got um, the last BG, Barry Gibbs, emotional first interview following Robert's death. So want to apologize to you guys because I posted this last night. And um, thank goodness my, my fans care about me. But um, you guys said that y'all couldn't hear me. So this is going to be a lot harder because I'm hearing it for the second time. So I try to make kind of the same statements I made back then um, before we get to it. So let's let's let them cook. <laughs> hey, is this the Jive Talking Bridge? Yes, I suppose this is it. He said the Jive Talking Bridge. So, um, I don't know. Did we watch that? It seemed like you talking about a bridge that they made a video on. So, that's what set up the idea for this. That was the inspiration. Did lots of your songs come that way? Just something that simple? Well, some kind of source or some kind of trigger. I've got a song that I've been working on for Robin and it's called The End of the Rainbow. It's all about time. Today is tomorrow, winters are summers, and the end of the rainbow is here, you know? So whatever you're searching for, you found. Be happy with The funny thing is when where you are. The funny thing when I was watching this the first time, I recognized that he seems very grounded. Um like I said, I think a lot of y'all picked on me in the first reaction when I said uh I didn't know who the Bee Gees were. And so since he's the last BG and I barely any time I've at any time I've had never seen Barry Gibb on television. So that makes it even harder to even know about the BG. You know what I mean? So it's um, but like my first impression of him was like really grounded. Um, he seems like he doesn't need the fame, you know, he seems like he recognizes time past. Um that was my first impression. Cause he seems very laid back. The end of the rainbow is here, you know? So whatever you're searching for, you found. Be happy with where you are. And I always said to Roman Mo, you know, the dream came true. Stop, stop, sit down and enjoy it. No matter how you look at it, the Bee Gees' success was colossal. But for all the joy, equal measures of pain. My greatest regret is that every brother I've lost was was in a moment when we were not getting on. Mm. I think that hit me pretty hard, man, because uh, I'm very close with my family. And I know some of you guys are too, so it'll be uh, to lose a brother when you're not getting along. That's that hit that hit much differently. Every brother I've lost was was in a moment when we were not getting on. And so I have to live with that. I'm, I'm the last man standing. You all right? Yeah. I'll never be able to understand that because I'm the eldest. That's funny because um, being the eldest brother, you seem, I think it's, does you know how we talk about the circle of life, right? So I think being the eldest brother, you expect you yourself to go first before your younger siblings, but seeing your younger brothers go before you, seeing the last brother that was born go first, and then the other two go before you. I think, I don't know. His, um, I wonder if anybody out there shared that his, share his same perspective, like watching your younger brothers die and being the eldest and being the last one. You all right? Yeah. I'll never be able to understand that because I'm the eldest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to take you back because I think people don't realise that you weren't born with silver spoons in your mouth. No. You really were pretty poor. Um, well, uh, yeah, I th that's the right word. We were from Manchester and we had no fear. Looking for a better life, the Gibb family became 10 pound poms, settling in Redcliffe, north of Brisbane, in 1958. So I think growing up in Australia, there is nothing like it. And, and uh, that's my country, that's, that's uh, you know, um, that's where my heart is. That's where my heart is. Mm. 
Mm, that hit on a different level with me because like I've been doing a lot of research on history, man, and I recognize that it's very important to know where you come from, even if you not weren't born there. Um, and for him to grow up in Australia or Manchester and recognizing where his home is, he never really forgot like where he grew up. So I'll stop. <laughs> You guys knew you wanted to be stars. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to be famous more than anything. You're dealing with the older brother and two twins mm. who were very close, although they weren't alike, you know. It almost felt like you were triplets. Well, Morris, Morris's uh, stock joke was that we're actually triplets and Barry's deformed. You know, so. <laughs> 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 it was it, always funny, you know. And that's how we always looked at each other. We never, there was nothing serious about anything we were doing. Um, um, and we never stopped laughing. We used to have tin cans on brushes, you know, on, on mum's sweeping brush, and yeah. pretend that was a microphone, you know. And that's how it started. Explain yeah. to me why you guys had to leave Australia. Ambition. Pretty much. That's all that was. You know, you, I think... Um, if the opportunities were more available for them to get famous of where they were from, I think they would stay. But, you know, having the temptation or just the drive to be successful, it, it kind of pushes you into a place to where you need to put yourself in a situation to be discovered, too. So they recognize that, yeah, we need to move to America. And most of the time, like America was like the centerpiece of the music industry back in that time, too. In London, they were picked up by the management team behind The Beatles. Oh. Legendary promoter Robert Stigwood launched their first single anonymously. And Robert put it out in America for radio, but he didn't tell anybody who it was. And I think his, the trick for him was to make everyone think it was The Beatles. Is it true that uh, the song Massachusetts, not only could you not spell it, but you'd never been there? <laughs> no, we did go there, though. <laughs> And it's a lot of people from Massachusetts who can't spell Massachusetts. <laughs> Afterwards. It was about flower power because, you know, everyone went through that phrase. Massachusetts was our way of saying flower power is an era of itself, in itself, and it will pass. And you, you better go home. And the lights all went out in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts. Is one place I have seen. <laughs> I think your dad said to you to always smile on stage when you were young. Oh, he would stand at the back of the audience. <laughs> Tell Robin. <laughs> but dad was very non-demonstrative. He couldn't, he couldn't show his emotions. So he never praised you? No. No. Um, um... He would, he would, you know, you'd see the look in his face. Him. That was good. Yeah. That was all right. Um, and that, that helped to drive you on, didn't it? Yeah, because, you, because you're probably looking for acceptance all the time. And, and if, you get, if you get that too easily, you don't work for it. Mm, that's a bar. That's a bar. He said, if you're looking, uh, if, you re if you receive success too early, you uh, never uh, work for it. Let me rewind that. I don't know how I just miss re not remember stuff. Acceptance all the time. And, and, and if, you get, if you get that too easily, you don't work for it. In 1969, Robin left the band. So, okay, so this is on the cusp of the 70s. Y'all did say Robin left the band a couple times, I think. Um, but then, you see how important a father's acceptance of you is? Um, their father, who, like he said, was one dimensional, but he was there for them and his approval. He wasn't giving them their, his, uh, his approval all the time, you know, and that helped to push them further. Yeah. I, I think their dad kind of knew that instinctually as well. But two years later, they reunited and by the mid seventies had rediscovered their mojo. They moved to Miami as disco erupted. And then the world really exploded for you. Yeah, and we became, uh, I don't know, we were in a bubble, you know. You're in it, but you can't see it. So you're, you're in the eye of a storm. Mm -hmm. 
What's that like when people are clambering over your cars? There's thousands of people wherever you go. It's great. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. It's never happened to me. <laughs> it would be nice if we could find a bigger sound for that solo. Great. Go rounder. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, beautiful. So now remember we watched the live stream and we talked about synthesized music and the birth of it. This, I mean, I know that's a keyboard that he's playing on, but that sounded very synthesized right there. And he said like the mid to late 70s, that's when you begin to kind of hear that sound. So I'm very curious that um, I'm very kind of happy to see that. You know what I mean? So. I'm t- I actually talking a lot more than I did in the first reaction. Oh, it would be nice if we could find a bigger sound for that solo. Great. Go rounder. All right. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, let's do it again. Second half of the chorus, but bring that sound in. That's great. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. It's usually melody first, and um, and then a few days later we'll sit down and do the lyrics. Because it's nice to let something ferment, let it let it let it find its way into your head, and let it stay there, and then you do the lyrics, mm-hmm. you know? and you make the lyrics fit the melody. Right, that's how you make a good it song. Got to a point where uh, you weren't in the charts; you were the charts. We had five in the top ten, and at one point, as a writer, I had five, I had three songs in the top five, all by different artists. You've worked with some of the most incredible artists in the world. Is Barbara Streisand the most oh, wow. intimidating of all of them? We got to do that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> she I think so. Right scary. Oh boy, yeah, I love her. <laughs> yeah, but she scares me. <laughs> Why is she scary? Does she yell at you or something? No, she's angry. She gets, she gets angry. She's happy and angry and happy and angry. And... You, of course, had the falsetto. Yeah. Tell me about discovering that falsetto. <clears throat> well. <laughs> It's a long story. Um, <laughs> how do you do it? How do you? I mean, how? Well, you change. You just go from that to that. <laughs> Did you? I mean, and you start singing. That scream led me to doing whole songs like that. So, and then everyone got carried away because it worked so well that Robin would say, "Oh no, sing this song, sing this song," because we're having smashes, we're having hit records. You know, we're six number ones in a row with that sound. Robin wanted success more than anything. That's surprising. And, um, that's what made Robin tick. You have said... That's surprising to know. I thought Robin would probably be the less... I thought he would be the lesser of the driven... of the brothers that would be driven. You know what I mean? But to see that he's the more driven than anybody else. Yeah. Anything. And um, that's what made Robin tick. You have said that you never want to feel success because then you'll stop trying. Yeah. Is that why you think you've been able to keep your humility? Because Stay on the ground. Yeah. Don't believe any of it. Right. Because uh, everything passes no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. And what have, we wit- what have we witnessed in the past 10 years? How, how everything really does pass. On a drive to Miami Beach, Barry is thinking a lot about the old days, about his good friend Michael Jackson. I didn't know he was called Michael Jackson. With Michael. You know, we had some amazing moments. He would always say, you know, things like, you know, watch out. Watch out, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, they want your music. <laughs> They're trying to get my music. <laughs> it's all right, Michael. <laughs> what do you think your greatest achievement is? My family, my children, my grandchildren. You know, because that's real. Hello. Wow. Oh, good day. That's something... That's something to say. Most people would say, oh, yeah, when I won the Grammy or, you know, when I had six one number one hits in the charts, man said his family because that's real. The man, like I said, throughout this whole video, even in the first reaction, I was like, man, this dude is seriously grounded. It, it, the fame did never got to him. It never got to him. My children, my grandchildren, you know, because that's real. <clears throat> Well, g'day. <laughs> g'day, mate. Hey, I'm Ronnie. How are you? Lovely nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hello, sir. Where'd you get the hat? <laughs> <laughs> so I you, told you. You've put up with this man for 45 years. I have indeed. How do you manage to have one of the longest marriages in show business? Yeah. We don't really know, actually. We don't really know. I guess we keep laughing. We, yeah. There you go. Yeah. 
As close as Barry is to his wife Linda, the relationship with his brothers was a deep and unbreakable bond. Nobody really ever knew what, what the three of us felt or what the three of us thought about each other. Only the three of us knew. That's good. That's good. It was such a unifying thing. Uh, the three of us became like one person. You know, we all had the same dream and, you know, that's what I remember more than anything else. And that's what I miss more than anything else. Mm. Robin died four months ago. Morris, or Mo, as Barry calls him, died in 2003. Andy, who was 12 years younger than Barry and a successful solo artist, died in 1988. What happened with Andy was always abstract. The medical story is that his heart was very bad, but he, 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 he had lived a lifestyle that, you know, very few of us in the family even knew about. So uh, what, what would you call it? The L.A. lifestyle. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't have to look too far. Right. Mm. right. Why do you think that happened to Andy when the three of you, to a large extent, avoided that depth of... We abuse? never avoided it. We all, we, all, we all fell over at certain points. It has been a bloody tough year for you. It's actually been a bloody tough decade, you know, um, uh, since, uh, since I guess losing Mo. It's 10 years. We lost Mo in 48 hours from being perfectly, you know, spirited, normal guy, as, as wacky as he always was, you know, to suddenly becoming gravely ill and, and, and we just lost him. Wow. Wow. So you never really know what killed him. Like, what? Like, he wasn't even. Gravely ill for uh, for a certain amount of time, he just died in two days. Like from being perfectly, you know, spirited, normal guy as as wacky as he always was, you know, to suddenly becoming gravely ill, and and, and we just lost him. Um, the situation with Rob um, was different because I um, I always felt something was wrong with Rob, and 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 if something's really wrong with you, you don't want everyone to know. So Robin didn't even tell you until... No, no. Late in the piece. Even now, uh, um, those closest to him will say it was something else. There's a lot of um, not wanting to say what it is, you know. Uh, cancer is cancer, you know. Mm -hmm. Barry Gibb and your, young, and your young brothers. Now, come on, who are you? Which is which? Your twins, eh? I'm Robin. Robin? And Morris. And Morris. Yes. Now, you all seem together, eh? That's right. Yes. And your brother, Barry Place. Now, come on up. Come on up here. That's right. On up through there. <laughs> you know, you can't watch it. No, it's too hard. Too hard. <laughs> Is it because it makes you sad or because... No, it makes, just makes me emotional. Yeah. How special they were. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Are you yeah. feeling the loss of them? So dealing with uh, it. Yeah, for a long time. Mm. I, the only way I can actually deal with it is through music. When mm. you see that, do you remember those of the first... Yeah. We loved it. That's why we did it. That's why we did it, you know. <clears throat> we knew it sounded great, you know. We just, we just knew. And, and that, was, uh, that was our path. And we, there was no other path. So We loved the sound of each other's voices and... Uh, can we take a pause? Yeah, sure. Man, so, um, he, he hit and getting hit with it hard. Moment. Do you want yeah. some water? Yeah, love. It's <clears throat> that video, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Here no, it's go. okay. Hey, yeah. listen. Yeah. It's... Sorry, I don't know. know no, not at all, love. Well. Um, because that hasn't happened before. You've never cried? No. Oh, Barry, I'm so sorry. That's all right, darling. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. It's, uh, that's life, isn't it? You know? But that's... Um, but that hadn't happened. So you mean to tell me, and I said this in the first reaction, but he had not never cried over his brother's death like since it happened. And I wonder. Um, that, But that kind of has to deal with the realms of accept, accepting that you won't ever speak or hear their voice again. You know, that's, that's the toughest part, you know. Uh, that's life, isn't it? You know? but, that's, um, but that hadn't happened. My greatest regret, is that every brother I've lost was was in a moment when we were not getting on. And so I have to live with that, you know, and I'll spend my life reflecting on that, is that we were all, we were, we were you know, there were many times we had conflicts, 
but uh, but this was uh, it, it was just really dis distressing that every time one of them passed, it was during a moment when we weren't getting on. Mm. I see a lot of sides to life now that I didn't see before, and I don't know why, but I'm the I'm, I'm the last man standing, so um, I'll never be able to understand that because I'm the eldest. Right. Mm. Um, so what's don't try to understand it. You know, don't try to understand it. Just keep keep moving. That's Scarborough. I know he recognized if he toil about it on it, like if he think about it too much, it'll probably mess him up a lot. But like I said at the beginning, being the eldest and watching your younger brothers die, how I, it got to be something that feels entirely different. If anybody out there like went through that, like let me know in the comments. Like I like to know the story for real. That's the house. Barry is returning to Tour Australia in February. He'll be sharing his music, home movies and stories, including his colourful childhood in Redcliffe. Right about here, the three of us stood together and decided that we would never break the law again. Really? Joining him in Miami is the mayor of Moreton Bay region, Alan Sutherland. And my speech to them was, we're either going to end up as criminals or we're going to end up being famous. We have to decide now. Well, yeah. that's a changing yeah. moment on the record. Yeah. Yeah. It, it certainly was. And I remember having a pen knife that I just nicked from Woolworths and I threw it in the water. Really? And, and I never stole another thing in my life. Next year in Redcliffe, a walkway will be named in honour of the Bee Gees. <laughs> what are you doing? A now? model of what's going to be a lot larger. <sighs> There'll also be a life sized statue. Wow. This, this must be a bit overwhelming. Uh, the whole day has been a little overwhelming for me. Um, uh, today was the first time I'd actually accepted the fact that my, all my brothers are gone. Man. And that was tough. Yeah. 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 I, I said that a few, few minutes ago. <laughs> like, it's like he accepted it finally, you know. Uh, but, but I have to thank you for that because that hasn't happened. That hadn't happened until today. And because it was totally unacceptable to me, you know? That Robin had passed. Yeah, that all of them are gone, you know? When you get up on the stage in Australia, will yeah. your brothers be alongside They'll be you? on stage with me, yeah. We just didn't agree on everything and that's the way life was. But boy, if we have some fun, <laughs> my God. From here on, I got the memories and I've been able to un unload a lot of those emotions today. I didn't know what would happen because I hadn't done an interview since, since I lost Rob, you know? Well, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. So, that, that was very sombering, actually, um, to know that and to actually see that. Barry is very grounded, man. And I know you guys talked about he had some affairs over the years and stuff. And uh, to see him and his wife still together, that's pretty cool. Um, I know why she didn't love. That's Kirite. <laughs> but uh, it's... Um, I don't know, man. Like, you know, I think like that. I think like Barry when when he come to death. Like, I think about my uncles who passed before me and how old they were when they passed. And, um, you know, a couple of my uncles, I still remember what they looked like. One of my uncles, one of my dearest uncles, um, I, you know, I'm starting to forget what he looks like. Um, and uh, I don't remember the sound of his voice. I don't. I don't remember his vocal register. I don't remember, you know, you know. And there's like a shade of what he looked like, you know, and and I'm and I miss him dearly. I really miss him. Um, he died when I was eight, and I think about him over the past 30 years. And every time I think about him, I get teary eyed because he's the one. Um, he was the one that taught me how to read before I was in school. You know, I had a 
in kindergarten, I had like a fifth grade reading level. Like, and I think that's part of the reason why I'm able to understand so well when it comes to that stuff. So, uh, uh, I'm going somewhere else with it. So, let me know uh, in the comment section below, man, uh, how much you guys uh, like this kind of content, man. And make sure, man, if you guys want to see more BGs on the channel, put the links in the comments, and I'll catch you guys at another one. All right? Peace.